guys, it's manager Kylie, and in today's video, I'm gonna share with you how to fill out the USA ice hockey score sheet. So today I'm gonna share with you how to fill out the USA ice hockey score sheet. This is actually very similar to the one used in the NCAA. I do have a separate video on that. If you're interested in checking that out, I will have it linked up in the iCard. Uh, but I'm gonna go through all the different things you need to know, all the different pieces of information you need before the game, and while the game is going on, everything that you need to know how to write down and how to track. And if you're interested in more hockey videos or anything like this, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to give you the links to the videos I already have, as well as make some more content for you on the things you're interested in. And if you're interested in more sports administration videos just like this, definitely hit the subscribe button, turn the bell so you get notified every time I upload as opposed to a new video every single Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Time. We're gonna dive into this score sheet. This one's slightly different than that NCAA one, but still has a lot of important information that you need to know how to score for that ice hockey game. So here is a USA Hockey official score sheet. This one is actually uh, one I printed off the internet. Usually it comes on a much bigger piece of paper so that you have more room to write. And a lot of times it does come with those like carbon copies underneath it that it's multiple pages and whatever you write on the top page goes through to the other pages that way you can give it to each team at the end of the game and then the tournament organizer can have the rest um so what i'm going to go through is kind of the details the important things you need to know and just some of the pointers i have when filling this out we're going to kind of go section by section in order what you would fill out before the game and then what you would fill out after the game or while the game is playing a big thing to know this compared to like an NCAA one, uh, this one has separate scoring and penalties for each team so you don't have to mark which team it is for each one. Where like an NCAA score sheet that you would use at the college level only has one column for all of that so everything's kind of put together. So the first thing you're going to do on this is you're going to start in this middle section and that is where your date, time, and all of that is. So that's all your game information. So we're going to say the game happened on 12-5-21. This is, if you're in a tournament or something, you can put the game number. So we're going to say it's game number three. This is division. It depends on the age. We'll say it's U14. You can put any sort of age group depending on what it is. Or if you have division one, two, three, whatever your league has for ages. Usually it's the U14s and all of that. Uh, the start time, we can say it's scheduled for 2 o'clock, and then at the end of the game, you will put the end time. I'm going to just put one in there now because um, I'm just using a fake game, but if you can put in the start and the end time, if they had a curfew, you could put in the arena where the game is played or in, and the surface, all of that. That's kind of up to you depending on where you're playing the game. The next thing you want to make sure that you have is the team information. So you can actually put either team on each side. This has the ability to put home and visitor on the top for either side. You just circle whichever one it is. So if you're sitting and the teams are on one side's on your teams on your left and one team's on your right, you do have the ability to put those teams on there, each one of their respective sides based on the way you're sitting, which will help you and make it a little bit easier. So we're just gonna say that this is team B, this is team A. We'll say that they're the home team and they're the visitors. So the next thing you're going to do is fill out that roster. And a lot of times at these hockey tournaments, coaches will just have stickers with their roster that you can stick that roster sticker right on them and then you won't have to fill it out. You also have the option at these to have some sort of team manager go in and fill it out. So they're just going to put like their position. So we can put goalie, defender, 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 some forwards, all of that and fill out. Okay, then one, three, seven. 12, 13, 14, so forth and so on, and then their names. You can just fill out that entire roster. This part should all be on that sticker. Same for this side. If you get a sticker, it would fill out this entire stuff. There's even the coach's info, so you would have all the coach's info all in that as well. So that sticker, usually you would just be able to stick right there, and you wouldn't have an issue about having to fill this out, or you give it to some sort of team manager for that team to fill out the information. If they do give you like a paper roster, you will have to go in and physically fill it out. But that does give you a few options. A lot of teams do use those stickers um, so you don't have to fill it out. So now it's going into gameplay and there's going to be shots that are scored. So we're going to focus up onto this scoring section up here. So each team has one of them. So what you're going to do is you're going to focus. I'm going to show you on this one. So if a shot is scored, you're going to put the period. So we're going to say a shot was scored in period one. The time on the clock we'll say is 5 minutes and 15, 52 seconds. You're going to, for the G, you are going to put the goal. So who scored the goal? So we're going to say it was number 14. If there was any assists, we'll say it's 2 and 7. If there's no assists, you would just put a dash right there. 
And then the type of goal. In very small font down here, it says different types of goals. So it would say you can put EV for even strength, PP for power play, SH for shorthand, EN for empty net, EA for extra attacker. That means you're the one that emptied the net so that you could have that extra attacker. And then you have PS for penalty shots. You can put the type of goal. We're just going to say this was an even strength goal. So you just put EV right there and then you mark your goal and you're going to continue doing this. Okay. So now the other team scores, but now it's the second period. You can say that they did it with eight minutes and five seconds on the clock. It was number 12. Uh, there was no assist and this was an even strength goal as well. So, so forth and so on. You can just fill out that as each team scores goals. And then for scoring by period, you would just mark, okay, they scored one, they had zero, okay, they had one, so forth and so on. At the end of each period, you can fill this out. And then at the end of the game, you'll put in the total. And now for penalties. Hockey, you are gonna probably end up with at least some sort of penalty throughout the game. So I'm gonna show you how to mark that next. For the penalties, you're gonna start with the period. So we're gonna say there was a penalty in period number one. The number is, the player will say it was number 21. What they did, we're going to say that it was roughing. And for this, this is going to, the minute is the amount of time for the penalty. So that's going to depend on your league rules and the age group and all that, whether it's a minute and a half or two minutes, you're going to put in whatever that is. If it's a major penalty, it might be more. So whatever your league rules are for minor penalties and then if it's a major penalty or something like that, you'll put the time in there. We're going to say it's two minutes. And then your off is the time they come off the ice. So we're going to say that is nine minutes and three seconds. And then the game continues. The start is actually the same as your off time. This one has both off and start, but that's the same time. And then once the game continues, if there was to be a goal to score, they might go on early. That's what your on time is. It's whether or not they played out the full penalty or if a goal was scored. So if a goal was scored, that'd be less. And we're going to say a goal wasn't scored. So then it's just 7.03 was when they went back on the ice. And then you have your penalty. And the refs will give you what this is, the offense. The rest will give you the offense and the time. They'll let you know that. Um, but it is helpful to know if you understand their hand signals to understand what they're saying. That is definitely helpful. But many officials will help you out with that. And if it is some sort of major penalties, they'll also help you out with filling that out. This next section down here, again, this all just repeats on both sides. I'm just kind of showing you one side, but it does repeat on both sides for each team. You have the goalkeeper, so you are able to keep track of shots and saves. Um, you might want to even do this in some sort of tally on the bottom just so you have that, so you're aware of that. But the easiest thing to do is, okay, you just put in the jersey number, so we'll say number one's in net. If you wanna keep track of tallies, you can say, okay, there was two shots, he had two saves. Okay, there was three shots, he had two saves, so forth and so on. Keep track of that, and then you can keep track of the total minutes played. If, say, they were to sub in number 20 in the third period, okay, you can say four and four, so forth and so on. So you can say how many total shots they had at the end of the game, how many total minutes, all of that. And then you can total it up for the team. So this would total it for the individual players in these columns. And then this would total up for the entire team. So you can keep track of that many times in tournaments and stuff. They won't require you to keep track of that, but it's definitely important to know that as well. And then at the end of the game, you're gonna want the officials to sign this um, just to make sure that everything went smoothly. So for the first one, it's the official score. You can just put your name, and then you're going to have all the official names as they go. So you just have everything listed. They're going to put like their level, whatever that is. They're going to put their level respectively. And then their referee signature, one of the refs does need to come over at the end and kind of sign away just to approve the score sheet to make sure everything went smoothly. And then once the game is over, this is when this becomes important. So this is usually on one of those pieces of paper that has all the different colors on the bottom. So this tells you where everything needs to go. So the white goes to the league offices. So if you're, if this is some sort of league game or tournament, that goes to whoever's in charge. The yellow goes to the home team. So the home team will keep the yellow one. So that's team A will keep the yellow copy. The pink gets the visiting copy, copy and the gold one goes to the referees. So you have all those. You want to make sure you distribute the copies. Usually there would be other colored papers attached to this. So everything that you're writing, especially if you make sure you write in pen so that everything goes through. You want to make sure that everything's going through onto those other copies so that whenever each team gets it, they are able to see 
uh, what happened during the game and then they have like that recap of the game. So this is kind of the basics of the USA Hockey score sheet. If you have any questions about everything I just did, definitely let me know that in the comments down below. I'd be happy to give you more information. If you want to check out that video on the NCAA Ice Hockey, uh, definitely check out the iCard. I will have that linked. One other thing I forgot to mention is up here at the top, we do have the ability to mark off whether it's Tier 1, Tier 2, Girls and Women's, High School, house rec or adult so you just kind of base it off whatever you're using for we'll say this was a high school game so you are able to mark that off age group wise as well but this is kind of everything you need to know for the usa hockey score sheet so i hope you guys found that helpful again if you have any questions on how to fill out any part of this score sheet definitely let me know in the comments down below i'd be happy to answer any questions you have about the score sheet or go into more details if you have any questions about any individual section if you want to see more videos like this definitely let me know that in the comments down below do have some other ice hockey videos if you're interested in that and if you're just interested in any other sports administration videos definitely hit the subscribe button and i will see you guys next wednesday <laughs>